Hello boys and girls. Today Catherine is going to make a quiche. We're going to make a salmon and basil quiche. So for our utensils I have here already greased a quiche dish, a, a, a big bowl for mixing, our measuring cups, um, our wooden spoon for mixing, our spatula for scraping, a few spoons, a fork for beating the eggs and a sharp knife, a rolling pin and I'll also be using a chopping board and a grater to grate some cheese. Okay, I think that's everything. Um, so first we're going to do the base and the base is very light, the very same uh, rough puff pastry that we used um, for the yogurt cake. So it's rough puff pastry and it, and, and this is about a third of the piece that we made. So instead of putting white flour underneath it, because we're making a savory dish, I'm going to make it a little bit different. And I love macroon flour for brown breads and things like this. It's really a uh, stone ground wholemeal flour. It is really nutty and a lovely flour to use. I just use it all the time. So I'm going to get a fistful of that and I'm going to roll out my bit of pastry using this to get a little bit of bite into it. Um, just uh, when, when, when you find you, it's just t it tastes really well. So I'm going to roll it out on the wholemeal flour to get a bit of bite into it. And you'll see you get a bit of color into it as well. And it looks a quite unusual pastry. People will wonder what, you, what recipe you used. And merely you're just rolling out on the, the wholemeal. And you'll see the nice rough seeds that are in the wholemeal flour will come through nicely. It was my mother-in-law Liv talking how to do this. So you can see the nice color and it's pink and it's good and healthy and you're picking up you're putting a nice bite into it. So, using my rolling pin, I'm going to pick it up and I'm going to put it in. Readjust it to make sure that it fits. And if you happen to be short, I'm a little bit short there. If you happen to be short anywhere, cut a little piece off. Get yourself a little bit of water. And just put a bit of water along the edge there so that you'll stick it otherwise it wouldn't stick so we'll just put that little patch in there you'll see i've just put a little patch in there nobody will know under the quiche and again cut off from the outside moving around the circle that to the side and there you have it your base for your quiche is ready now by all means if you don't like the brown flour idea you just roll it out as white pastry and you can buy it or you can make it so just wash my hands quickly we wash our hands often when we're cooking. Right, so now I bring my chopping board and I'm going to quickly chop an onion. A medium sized onion, take off the skin, put those into our pea bowl because I don't want to be crying. 
the acid in onions can make our eyes water sometimes. So when you're cutting an onion, it's a good idea to, to not be talking uh, and to breathe through your mouth only, not to breathe through your nose, you know? So forget about your nose and just go in and out through your mouth. And that way you don't take up the acid through your nose, okay? So I'm gonna cut this finely now. I don't want big chunks of onion in the quiche and you could put lots of different vegetables into the quiche so as i said this is a salmon and basil quiche so i'm going to use one medium on onion finely chopped with which i'm doing now I'm going to use a cupful of cheese, grated, nice cheddar cheese. I'll come to that in a moment. I'm going to use four eggs beaten and I'm going to use a few bunches of basil all chopped up nicely. Okay, so I'm going to put the onion there into, into my bowl and I'm going to use a tin of salmon. Now I've already opened this. So you can see there's the salmon, oops, sorry. Uh, there's the salmon and I have it drained off uh, pretty well. And I'm just gonna put that in there. Now, sometimes you will find bones, you want to break up the salmon into chunks like that. Sometimes you will find uh, bones like that. I'll show you now, uh, fish bones in the salmon. Now, it's probably the best source of calcium that you can get is tinned fish and the bones are through it. So you just mash them in. You take no notice of them. They're soft. You mash them in a really good source of calcium, particularly important for women. OK, so that's my fish and my onion are in there i'm going to chop i'm going to leave it behind now because it's making me cry ever so slightly um, i'm going to take i have here a plant of basil and um, i've got quite a lot out of this plant now and i'm hoping that it might regenerate and grow another bit but maybe not okay so i'm going to chop up Crunch it up like this. Crunch, crunch, that's in your way, sorry. Crunch it up with your fingers and then chop it finely. And that'll go straight in to the bowl as well. Whoops, couldn't find my bowl. Right, so there's my bowl. And now we're going to put in four eggs. Now you can put these into a separate bowl and beat the eggs if you like. It's probably it's probably the best thing to do. That's what I will do now. I go to bowl here. Right. So we're going to put four eggs in here. So again, when we're breaking the eggs, pull apart. Don't squish with your fingers. Pull apart. Okay, when you get the little hole, just pull apart and let it fall in. Just pull apart and let it fall in. Pull apart and let it fall in. Right, so I'm going to beat the egg with the fork. Now I'm also going to add a half cup full of milk to this. So we're going to put in a half cup of milk. That's the green cup, half cup of milk into the egg. And as I say, if you had it all in the one bowl, you can do it that way too. So we're going to pour, add this in here. And I'll use my wooden spoon to mix it. Just give it a small mix. 
that. There's your peace mix. And into that. Now, if you don't like cheese and don't want to use cheese, by all means, you could put some sweet corn or uh, something else in with it. Maybe some yellow pepper or some red pepper uh, to, to bulk it up a small bit if you didn't want to use the cheese. But um, I'm a lover of cheese. This cheese is a very special cheese to me because it's it's Nakanoa farmhouse cheese made by dairy farmers in County Waterford. And um, uh, Patricia and Eamon, they happen to be my cousins and um, I really like their farm and their cheeses. Now, watch out for it, Nakanoa, K-N-O-C-K-A-N-O-R-E farmhouse, vintage white cheddars, lovely flavour for things like this. So I'm going to um, get about a cupful of cheese and I'll keep a little bit of it for the top of the quiche. The rest will mix in through. And keep the fingers well back when you're grating cheese. I'm looking for a cup. So I have the metal ones here, different cup measures. It doesn't matter what cup measure you use, okay? So roughly about the cup full like that. It's just a guide. So that goes into your mix. And you mix that up nice and gently like that. Okay, so now we're going to put all this into, I'm going to use my spatula. And I'm going to put all this in. And you can see the nice green bits of basil. I love basil. It is a beautiful flavour. Gives a lovely flavour to dishes. So there's my quiche mix gone in there. And we're going to spread it around. So there's the quiche mix. Doesn't that look well? And you can see the little brown specks uh, on the pastry as well. So then spread around a little bit of cheese that you've left over out of the cupful. And if you've forgotten to keep back a little bit, you can always grate another little bit like so. And put it on top. And this makes a gorgeous supper or a lunch. Um, you can serve it with a lovely salad. We'll do another a salad some other day. Um, a nice tossed salad and a slice, slice of quiche is a really nice meal. Okay, so this is going to go into the oven for 35 minutes at 170. And I'm putting on my oven gloves to make sure that I don't burn myself. I'm putting it into the oven oven okay so i'll give you a look at it when it comes out so enjoy making your quiche <laughs> 